So let's give a new Gotham welcome for John Glover and Mr. Kevin Conroy! Good afternoon, gentlemen. How are we doing today? Great. Is this the best seat? Um, if you're in it, uh, that's all yeah, I'm calling. it is now. Oh, hello. Hello. That's how we're doing it. Guys, how has Philadelphia been treating you so far? Philly? Oh, yes. The audience has been incredible. Really wonderful. You guys are the best. Absolutely. <clears throat> you're the reason we come. Yes, 100%. This, this uh, used to be my town. I, I'd come here in the 70s. I started, the first play I did here was in the 60s at the Schubert Theater. And then I did a whole season at the Walnut Street Theater, a couple of them. So yeah. I've done a lot of theater here. This uh, town means a lot to me. First time, first time I was here was in 1981 and doing a Broadway tour at the Walnut Street Theater. It's a good theater. It's, it's the a oldest beautiful theater. operating theater in America. It's a beautiful. Great, great theater. Love that. That's so liberty. The New Bell. York stage actors, of which we're the group, um, are very familiar with Philadelphia. It's wonderful. It's a great theater town. So obviously we are fans of Batman the Animated Series, which is creeping up on 30 years of excellence and awesomeness. I was 10 years old when I started <laughs> I doing it. it. I believe it. I believe it. I was 12. <laughs> See? <laughs> a lot of method acting. So we still got a lot of career. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Absolutely. So obviously in terms of coming to these characters that are so iconic, the Riddler, Batman, what was it that you wanted to bring to make your stake your own? Well, you know, I was really naive when I came into it. This was the first animated job I ever auditioned for. Now that just doesn't happen, that you walk in to audition for Batman, <laughs> and it's the first thing you've ever auditioned for in the animated world for a voiceover, and get it. That it just doesn't happen. So that was just a very, very lucky day. But I think the fact that I didn't have any um, experience with the animated world, with the voiceover world, I didn't know who Bruce Tim was, or Eric Radomski, or Andrea Romano. I didn't, I wasn't intimidated. I didn't know enough to be intimidated. I was too much of an idiot to be intimidated. <laughs> and when you're that naive, I've found, you're much more free to experiment and explore and sort of dare to fail, as they say in the theater. When you take big risks, it's when you find really special things. And so I just used my imagination in the, uh, in the recording studio. And it was totally improvised on the spot. So it was a completely spontaneous audition. I love it, I love it. John, what about you? I had no idea what it was. Uh, they, uh, I'd worked with this director, uh, a couple of times in a Animaniacs and a Pinky in the Brain. Oh, great show. Right. I, I was shiny pants. <laughs> shiny pants. If that means anything to you. To but. all of us. <laughs> so, they, so they called me uh, and said that, that they've, they had somebody else was playing the Joker, but the Riddler guy had to move into the Joker, so they needed a new Joker. So she said, can you come in uh, tomorrow and do that? And that was like a couple of blocks from my house where they did it. So I walked around, and she, I saw the script, and it was a fun guy, this Riddler fella. Uh, so I thought, that could be fun. So I walked and had fun for two hours and left. And it was on Saturday morning, they said, so I thought, I'll never see that. <laughs> <laughs> And I did three of them, that's all. So I just walked around the corner three times and, uh, and did these things that were well written and I had, I mean, people said, how did you prepare your whatever? I said, I just saw this clever, cocky guy and thought I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I had, I, I'd never seen it. I mean, it was on Saturday mornings, like I said, why, a cartoon, yeah. I'm not into that. But now, 25, 30 years later, I'm seeing how much it affected so many people. Yeah. And I have this newfound kind of... Uh, like a reverence. Pride, reverence of, of having been a part of it and feel so lucky. Because I thought it was just a, a cartoon job. But apparently that wasn't just a cartoon. That was the beginning of something... A legacy. Huge. It's like a legacy. So, God bless you all. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Well, they are more than cartoons. They're 
I, I keep making the metaphor when I come to panels of, uh, of uh, the, the, the classic Greek and Roman heroes like Orestes and Achilles and Agamemnon. Those stories were told to the children at that time and to the people at that time to teach morality. Those were just morality plays and morality stories. Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman are our modern day Orestes and Achilles and Agamemnon. They're just modern day mythology. It's our mythology. Um, so I take it much more seriously than I did years ago. I have much more respect for it than I used to. Especially when I see how it resonates with the audience. Absolutely. I mean, so many people, a woman came up yesterday and just wanted to hold me, and as she was holding me, she just wept. And I realized, she said, you saved my life. And I said, I, I didn't save, she said, well, Batman did. She said, that show saved my life. I was lost, and I found my way because of the, the lessons from Batman. People have challenged childhoods. A lot of people have very difficult childhoods. And you realize that what you do has such resonance in, in some people's lives. Um, and it, it's, as John was saying, it's very gratifying years later to find out that you contributed somehow. To you want to see the heads that are going like mm -hmm. this. Yeah. <laughs> like those things on the back of a car wobbling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, for those that aren't quite as familiar, the you know, role in voice acting of actors is not usually to work together, but did you guys get to work together in the same space for the show? Well, that's a unique thing about Warner Brothers, mm -hmm. is that they, they really like to get the actors together in the studio. Um, it makes it much harder in terms of booking because everyone has complicated careers and lives and jobs, but to get everyone on the same day at the same two hour block is very hard. Uh, but they really try to get everyone in there because Andrea Romano is the one who cast these shows. And she's the best in the business. Absolutely. She's, Make some noise for Andrea. Yeah, she's like famously the best. Because she originally studied theater uh, in New York at, at um, uh, SUNY, in the, in the SUNY system, I think New Paltz. Um, and so she wanted to be an actress when she was young. And then she got into stage managing and then she got into agenting. So she's really moved around within the business, but she understands how actors think, how they work, and she knows how complicated the business is for actors. So she has a great deal of respect for actors, and she has a great deal of compassion for how complicated the lives are. Um, I don't know if you're gonna agree with me, but there's a lot of um, condescension toward actors in Hollywood. There's a lot of um, thinking they're spoiled brats. There's a lot of attitude towards, towards actors, I've noticed. And with Andrea, you just don't get any of that. She has great respect for the way actors work and, and as I said, how complicated the lives are. So she always insisted on getting everyone in the room together because she knew that acting is reacting. It's as much about what you're getting as what you're giving. What you give is what you get. You, you, you know that. When, when someone's feeding you so, so much more, it's so much easier to act. You just respond, you know, and it's, there's so much more. When I'm in the room with you or with Mark Hamill, I mean, these actors are just so incredible, you can't help but perform well. You know what I mean? They pull it right out of you. Um, so they get really great performances that way. It's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Um, now, since being on Batman, you also have delved into some other roles that might feel a little superheroic. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, what other superhero-esque roles have you guys touched on? What have you done? None. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. That's far from true. No, no, you mean voice. Not just voice. I mean, you've oh, touched the I've superhero a... realm quite a bit. Oh, I know a lot. Yes. That was the wrong answer. <laughs> but I Try it again. heard the question. I'm an asshole. I can't help it. Try it again. Far from it. Far from it. You're just amazing. No, no. I've done so many. And the fact is, I never grew up with them. I didn't read Batman or Superman. I watched the Steve Reeves TV show because that was on first. I mean, when I was a kid, it was on all the time. So we watched Superman. 
more phone booths around and there are no phone booths anymore. I don't know oh. how it would happen. That's right. Children, do you know what a phone booth is? All right. Google it. You'll be all right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we have to definitely want to open things up for you guys to ask questions. There's two microphones, so if you have a question, feel free to join sure. into the convo. You all are so spread out. Right. You really are. You should start on this down side. closer. You know, you go ahead in the back. Over to the left. You could see our pimples better. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. All right. Um, for uh, John, um, working with uh, Michael Rosenbaum, you've been on the show Smallville for about seven seasons and on and off um, during the tail end of it. But um, what was your favorite moment during Smallville that you really felt, you saw Michael really see his character finally become the Lex Luthor that everybody um, would know in the future? That is, I was falling to my death. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. I knew that they were at some point they were going to kill me because they just do. Because you get too expensive, they kill you. No. <laughs> and hire somebody much younger. It's a horrible business that way. Ruthless. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I did say that if if when you do kill me off, if you could ask, I'd ask that Lex would should kill me because that would flip him over into the creature that he became. I mean, how could you? Else could you live with some killing your own father, right? So, but to work with Michael was as frustrating as it could seem at the time, but you realized that he was giving you something to, uh, to work against and kind of be so frustrated by you'd want to strangle the son of a bitch. <laughs> but, but he's wonderful and he's a great actor and, uh, and that's one of the reasons. He, he knows how to play. There's a strange echo <laughs> after I finish speaking. <laughs> Thank Kevin, you. Kevin, what was it like for you to work with Michael since he provided the voice of Wally West on the, the Justice League series? Oh. He's, a, he's, a very, he's a very generous actor, I find. And, um, you know, actors are people. They're generous ones, selfish ones. Kind ones, mean ones, ones you want to work with, ones you want to run away from. <laughs> and uh, Michael's just one of those people I always look forward to working with because he's very generous, very, very much there in giving. Um, and as John was saying, willing to play. What you really want is someone who's willing to play, which, which means um, react to what they're getting. Be facile enough to really live in the moment. And if they're getting something different from you, play something different. You know what I mean? Be, be, be flexible enough to, um, to change if, if need be. And, uh, and Michael's very much that way. He's very reactive. It's great. That's awesome. Let's start on this side. Hi, guys. Hi. Um, this is for particularly for Kevin, but I really guess it can be for both of you. Um, so I don't know if you heard, but Robert Pattinson was cast as the next Batman in the Matt Reeves film. Right. And I'm just interested to hear your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't make choices. It's like, you know, who, who's your favorite child? You know, no one has a favorite child. Um, no, the, I thought it was kind of crazy when, when uh, Michael Keaton established Batman, and I thought, okay, this is going to be his franchise now. Um, and then they didn't give him the, the next one. I thought, well, what's going on? And then I realized what they were doing. They were, they were going to give it to, to many different actors. They didn't give the franchise to one person, which at first I thought was kind of crazy. That was sort of counterintuitive. It's not what the studios did before. But then when you saw how differently... Christian Bale played it to, uh, to um, Val Kilmer, to uh, um, Michael Clooney, Keaton, to, right. to, to, to any of them. Um, um, it, it made it so interesting that they're all, they all bring something different to it. Some are better, than, better at Bruce Wayne, some are better at Batman, some are better at bridging the characters. So I don't know um, what, uh, what he'll do with it. But... I would give him, give him the benefit of the doubt, because he's a really good actor, that he's going to do something really interesting with it. But you know, when Ben Affleck got it, 
my Twitter feed exploded. People were furious. <laughs> oh my God, he's terrible, he's gonna kill it. And I said, give the guy a break, he's a good actor, you know? And he ended up nailing it. He did a great job. So give Robert Pattinson, you know, a chance. Isn't he nice? <laughs> really, he really is nice. It's amazing. Hey guys. Hello. Uh, so I'm a singer, and something that comes with singing is a bunch of like weird rituals that we do to keep our voice kind of like together, like taking shots of olive oil, other weird stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering for more challenging voiceover days, how do you guys keep your voice in shape? Boy, that's a good question because I, um, like we were both saying, this, this was really something neither of us had done before. This, this was a new thing for, for both of us when we got into these animated characters. And so when I auditioned for Batman, um, you know, they had bought nine episodes. So I thought, well, nine episodes, I can do anything, you know, nine times. That's not going to be hard. That was in 91. Mm. It's 27 years later, and I'm still doing the voice, you know? Um, but it's, uh, at the end of the first season, I started losing my voice. And Andrea Ramon, because, you know, I was making the sound, I, I found that sound, as I said, just improvising in the audition, and I just, I just put myself into this very dark, uh, broody, kind of painful place. There it is. Come up with the sound. <laughs> But I was doing it by literally crunching down on my vocal cords. Just crunch. Because I was thinking, well, you know, I can do that a few times. They, I've got a microphone and I don't have to project it in the theater. This this will be easy. Well, by the end of the first season, I was losing my voice. And Andrea said, Kevin, we're in trouble. <laughs> You've established that sound. You've got to figure out a way to do it, you know, without doing that. So I went back and thought it through and thought, okay, now support, you know, everything you would do in the theater. Um, so you do have to think about that stuff, especially when it's over a long term. And, uh, but for me, tricks are, I drink a lot of tea. I don't drink coffee. I drink a lot of tea, probably too much tea. And I you drink it with honey and, um, and lemon. You know, I do that stuff. I gargle with salt. Um, all the traditional stuff. But uh, I don't drink coffee. Cool. So. Thank you. You love coffee. I drink tons of coffee. <laughs> I don't know any of that stuff that he just said that he does. And I don't know why I... But I also sing off key, so if that helps. <laughs> it's a character trait. I love it. Yeah. Hello. Thank you, guys. Thank Hello, you. my name's Dominic, and I have a question for Kevin. Uh, what's your favorite Arkham game that you cast it in? Mm. You're not going to like my answer. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I might. I look at them, you know, I'm the actor, right? Behind the voice and the experience and the gaming. So I don't experience it the way you experience it as a player. My experience of performing to, to, to create the game, my favorite one, the one I was most proud of, was Arkham Knight because of the end of it. The, that ending, that was a real acting job for me, and I loved it, and I was really proud of it, and I thought, wow, I really took this to another place. Um, but I know as a player, uh, people love Arkham City. They just love it, and, and I do too. It was the first one I did, and it was, you know. Um, so I'm proud of them all, but I have to tell you, the very end of the arc at Arkham Knight um, that, was, that was a real acting challenge for me, and I was really proud of how I pulled it off. Thank you. Sure. John, have you done any voice acting work for video games? I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I was a period where I would sort of be brought in to say that's for some game, and I would record a bunch of things, but I never, but I, I didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> I don't... I'm so very, I'm, I, I, it's like I cook with clenched fists in the kitchen, you know? <laughs> and I'm sort of on a computer that way, too. It's like I'm going to push some button that's going to be wrong. So I try and get off of it as soon as I can. That's fair. To play a game is not relaxing for me. On, the, a, vi, on a thing, on a little thing, a thing, a thing. <laughs> I'm an old guy. <laughs> The guy from Spectrum was the first ever to say, because I was having a problem, 
you know, doing this. And I said, don't you understand? I come from a time where you had to get up and walk over to the TV and turn it off or change the channel. <laughs> and he said, J you know, just the next time, tell him you're elderly. Oh. <laughs> And I started laughing. He said, what's so funny? I said, I just wanted to know that you're the first person to ever use that word with me. And then I wanted to go on and do something like you, but, but I didn't do that because I'm a nice person. <laughs> Bullshit. It's like, I, I'm not like Kevin. Ooh. He's a really nice. No, I heard you yell once. Oh, I've yelled. At some people. Yeah, yeah, never mind. We're the same. <laughs> I'm good too sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Hello. Hello, thank you both for coming. Sure. Um, I can say most of us probably watched the Justice League cartoon back in the day. And um, I'm seeing a lot of, I guess, movement on Twitter about possibly bringing the show back. Yeah. What is the process for that to happen or what are your chances of that happening? That's a Twitter fantasy. You know, that's, no, I think it's great that there's this movement and I applaud it, um, but that's really, not where the studio gets their ideas for new shows. Um, they're gonna do what they wanna do. And as far as I know, Bruce Tim is, is not interested in revisiting that. Um, I, I wish he would. Um, but then, then saying that, we're always the last people to find anything out. The actors only know until it's already been written and it's been produced and it's ready to get recorded, you know. Um, we never find anything out until the very end. Um, and, and, and I had no idea that Justice League Doom was going to be done. So I was amazed. I said, oh, we're going to do a, a movie, a Justice League movie. This is great. Um, and that just came out, you know. So who knows if there's enough of a demand from the uh, Twitter verse, maybe something will happen. But I don't know. Thank you both. Thank sure. you. Hello. Hi. Um, my question is for both of you gents. What inspired you individually to become actors? What was that one moment where you're like, this makes sense to me? I felt power. <laughs> I, I, I was, I was a, it was a school auditorium. We were doing The Importance of Being Earnest. And I started talking and, the, and the, all my classmates and everything uh, started laughing. Mm -hmm. And I thought I could, I, it just felt, they liked me. I felt like Sally Field, you know. <laughs> liked me, really liked me. But that's what it felt like, because I didn't know what to do with myself. I was strange and different as a child. But that made me happy. I similarly um, was 12, I think, when I had been to parochial schools, very strict Catholic schools, the old kind that had nuns and habits and you know, hitting your hand with a ruler. I mean, very traditional. Right. Yeah, yeah, the good old days. <laughs> I'll beat it into you, you little bastard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the good old days. And, um, and then we moved to a town that didn't have Catholic schools when I was about 12. So I went into public schools, and these public schools were like, I mean, there were no rules. It was crazy. Everyone was running around the rooms. People were talking back to teachers. I had never talked back to a teacher in my life. I was seeing this chaos, and I would tell the other kid, you know, stop it, stop it. And they thought there was something wrong with me. They said, this kid is crazy. He's telling the other kids to behave. So I was the one being sent to the guidance counselor. And literally, they were giving me Rorschach tests and like, like, uh, blocks and putting blocks together, they thought I was um, learning disabled because I just couldn't function. Yes. I was used to a clicker telling me when to kneel and when to stand. And um, there was this wonderful English teacher, uh, I'll never forget, Joyce Wilkes, who um, told us to read Julius Caesar. And this is like seventh grade. And I read it, and I had never read a play. I had never seen a play. I didn't know what a play was. And I was reading this, and I was thinking, wow. This was a whole world opening up to me, and it just made sense to me. Yeah. I don't know why. It just made sense. Maybe it was the order. I don't know. But the next day in class, she asked for comments, and I, my hand went up. And I, my hand had never gone up. Hmm. I was the kid with trouble. You know, 
And, um, and I was in all like D level classes because they thought that I was learning disabled. And I just went off and off and off on Brutus' speech and what it really meant and what he was saying. And she said, would you come to my afternoon AP class and join us in the conversation? And I said, sure, sure, sure. So I went to the afternoon AP class and I was like, yeah, this is what Brutus means and this is what he's saying and this is what's happening. And then she said, do you want to audition for the school play? She said, I think this theater is, is doing something for you. So they were doing um, Our Town. Yes. Which every junior high school does, right? Yeah, yeah, we did it too. And I auditioned. And I got George Gibbs. Holy smokes. And I was, the, the first time I went on top of that ladder yes. and the lights went down in the audience and the lights came up on me and every other kid on that stage was shaking with fear. I got so calm. Yeah. I got so comfortable. I was so safe in that light that I could just be anything and be me and reach out to Emily. And when I heard the audience react, I thought, I'm connecting with people. And there was this wonderful connection with the audience that I couldn't do when I was off stage because I was that weird kid. And then I was addicted. And then I went on to high school. I starred in all the plays. I was like the lead in all the plays. I ended up, lead I ended up getting all A-level classes, graduating high school a year early, getting a scholarship to go to Juilliard. Everything happened because I found theater. And it was all because of this English teacher who noticed one day that I became so animated in talking about this play. And I was this problem kid. Isn't that fascinating? Really? What one teacher can do? Yeah, absolutely. She just changed the direction of my life. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Great question. Sure. Hello. How are you doing today? Hey. It is an honor to talk to both of you. Uh, this, Kev, this question is primarily for Kevin. I remember coming home, being captivated by the animated series, the voice, how it just took the sock pow of the super friends and things like that and made it really brooding, foreboding, uh, personal. Then the next thing I know, it's on Justice League and they're using your voice again. <laughs> then the next thing I know, you're on Static Shock. Then the next thing I know, you're on Batman Beyond. And the next thing I know, I'm playing a video game and I'm like, this is Kevin Conroy's voice again. <laughs> My question is, what's it like to be the evolution of something that has gone so far from <laughs> back then to now? And are you still uh, interested in pursuing the role or you are? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I love playing. I love playing this character. There, the wonderful thing about Batman is, of all the superheroes, he's the most damaged. He is really a damaged Absolutely. person. And instead of letting it crush him, he turns his, his, his disability, his emotional disability, into power. And he turns it on evil to cure the world. And that's why I think the audience loves him so much. He's so ennobling. So there's so much to him because he's so complicated emotionally. It comes out of watching his parents die. It comes out of his not being able to have personal relationships. He's, he's a brooding, dark, complicated guy. And that makes, for an actor, you're always looking for those kind of things to enhance your performance. To, you know, Superman is, he's a wonderful guy, but he's square jawed and boring, let's face it. Voice you know what I mean? He's just like, you know, Dudley do right with a cape. You know what I mean? Um, but Batman is, is, he's even said about himself, I'm a man with issues. I mean, he's just, so I, I love playing him and I, anytime they ask me to do it, I do it. Um, but you asked about the, if I, if I could anticipate the evolution um, of the character, no, there's no way. You get, you know, as John will tell you, you, you get cast in a role, it's a job. You get cast, they, they're buying nine episodes, you think, great, I've got a job for two months. Um, you'd have no way of knowing. The other thing I'll tell you, which probably none of you would know, we don't sign contracts. 
for these things. There's no long-term contract signed. Every time you walk in a studio, and I've walked in that studio literally hundreds and hundreds, if not a thousand times, you are given a whole new set of contracts. Every day you sign again because they have no hold on you and you have no hold on them. There's no commitment either way. They can replace you. Can you snap? There you go. They can replace you like that. Um, so you never know. So when you look back and you think, oh my God, I've done this for 27, 28 years, and I've got this legacy, it happens step by step by step by step. You don't know it's happening until you look behind you and you think, wow, look at all those steps I took, you know? And great job singing in that Justice League episode. Hey. Am I blue? <laughs> 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 I want to see some of this. It sounds good. <laughs> oh, it's really good. It's really good. <laughs> yes, over here. Hi. Um, I just want to say I was watching a Batman anime series when I was a little child. Um, do you know what your favorite Batman versus um, the Whittler was? The best episode ever? Mm. What is your favorite what Batman your fa versus what is your Riddler favorite episode? Riddler episode? The Maze. What's it called? If you're so smart, why aren't you rich? Yes! <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that was good. Great one. That was very good. <laughs> and the favorite catchphrase of a Batman anime series. Most of all, except Batman, he don't know how to do catchphrases. Yeah, oh, really? no, he's got, a, he's got one really good one. I am vengeance. <laughs> I am the knight. I am Batman. <laughs> It never gets old. <laughs> <laughs> never. Just gives me goosebumps. <laughs> well, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, welcome to Philly, guys. It's great to see you. Thank you. My question is for Kevin. Me and my brothers watch all the animated movies again and again and again. My favorite movie with you is Flashpoint. Do you think what Barry did was the right thing? Came with Bob and made everything completely bad. Are you sure I did Flashpoint? You were in the movie. <laughs> well, Batman was in the movie. You are Batman, though, like for all of us. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that was one of my Batman movies. Like, yeah, I think that was Jason. Like you, like you were in the end of the movie where Barry gave his... Uh, the uh, letter to Batman, and you said, you are hell, I'm a messenger, thank you. And then uh, Barry, like, like... I think, you know, there's another actor who impersonates me. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a feeling that was one of his movies. Uh, well, do you think Barry did the right thing? <laughs> so Barry, Barry went back in time and saved his mother from dying, which oh. actually inadvertently changed everything. Okay. But he had the ability to do so, considering the, the mythos of Batman, was Barry wrong for going back and changing things? Oh boy, that's hard. Because if you change something in the past, it changes everything that happens after that in the future. So that's, that's really hard. Too I'm glad I wasn't there to make that decision. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank sure. you. Unfortunately, we have time for one more question, guys, so I apologize. Am I blue? <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Jared. There was a time <laughs> I was her only one. You got it. But now <laughs> I'm the sad and lonely one. Lonely. Get your ones out right now. There's, this, there's an episode where I sing Am I Blue, and the audience really loves it. <laughs> What's your question? Uh, I have a question for Kevin. Uh, what does it take to be a good Batman? Ooh. That's a great question. Well, let me first of all say there's a Batman in everyone. Hey. Everyone has the potential to be Batman. <laughs> I think the biggest thing about Batman, first of all, in playing it, I discovered that 
Batman is the true self, and the Bruce Wayne is the performance. He puts on his three-piece suit of armor, and he faces the world. All that charm, all that sophistication is a performance. Just like all of us have a private self and a public self. Bruce is his public self. Batman is who he really is. And if you play it that way as an actor, then it doesn't sound like you're putting on a weird voice when you do Batman, which I think is a mistake a lot of actors make. But the secret to becoming Batman, I think, is, um, is not letting your own ego get in the way. He is an incredibly compassionate person. He's always thinking of someone else. He lives to think of other people. It's, it's almost the only way he can deal with life is to take care. And which is something I think we should all do. So it's, a, it's something we should all live by. We should all be taking care of each other. And that's all Batman's about. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And yeah. on that note, Wizard World Philly makes some noise for hey. Kevin Conroy and John Glover. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. You can subscribe here to subscribe to the channel. There's more videos off to the left. Mr. J says don't forget to ring that bell button for more notifications.